The Saga of Eric the Viking by Terry Jones. Chapter 2 Eric and the Enchantress of the Fjord. The next day, they set to work to repair Golden Dragon. But Eric took three of his best hunters and said, We shall kill some wild boar, and tonight we shall feast. Eric and Ragnar Forkbeard and Sven the Strong and Thorkild set off into the wild forest. They had not gone more than a mile before they came to a cave. At the entrance of the cave was a strange creature, half bird and half wolf. Eric! said the creature, and its voice sounded like a thousand voices speaking together. My mistress is waiting for you. And it pointed into the gloomy cave. Who is your mistress? asked Eric. She who will tell you what you want to know, replied the creature. But Ragnar Forkbeard gripped Eric by the arm. Do not go into that dark cave, for I fear you will never come out again. I must said Eric. But Sven the Strong gripped Eric by the other arm. If you are killed, uh, we are all lost, he said. I must find out what I want to know, said Eric. Then Thorkild stood in front of him and said, Perhaps she is the enchantress of the fjord, who never lets any man return. If she can tell me what I want to know, replied Eric, I must meet her. Then he strode into the cave, and the other three would have followed, but a strange creature, half bird, half wolf, barred their way with its great talons and bared its wolf teeth. Whereupon Ragnar Forkbeard and Forkhild and Sven the Strong drew their swords and advanced towards it as one. Meanwhile, Eric walked boldly through the cave, and the light from the entrance got dimmer and dimmer, until there was no light at all and Eric was feeling his way along the rocky walls of the cave. Suddenly he stopped dead in his tracks. Above his head he could hear a sound like someone breathing. He looked up, but he could see nothing. Who is there? he cried. Go deeper into the cave, said a voice. And it sounded like his mother, although she was many, many miles away in another land. Eric put his hand on his sword and went deeper into the cave. Suddenly he stopped, for he could hear another sound above him. It sounded like a heart beating. Who's there? he cried. You must go deeper into the cave, said a voice. And it sounded like his father, although he had been dead for many years. But Eric pulled his helmet more firmly onto his head and went deeper into the cave. As he got deeper, the cave grew warmer, and he saw a red glow ahead of him. And as he got nearer and nearer, he let go of his sword, and took off his helmet, and found himself in a small room, and warm and soft, and on the f floor had been laid out food and drink and a straw bed. Eric was overcome by a desire to lie down and go to sleep. But something inside him told him to beware. Rest yourself, said his father's voice. I cannot, said Eric, for my men are waiting for me to return. Sleep, my child, said his mother's voice. I should like to, said Eric. And he lay down on the straw bed. But still something inside him told him to beware. I shall seek she who will tell me what I want to know, he said. And his eyes were half closing with sleep. This is all you need to know, said a soft voice at his ear. And he turned and saw a young girl beside him whose skin was green as jade. She held up a golden charm on a golden chain and said, Here, wear this round your neck and you will know everything you need to know. And she lifted it up and Eric looked at her eyes and still something inside him told him to beware. But he bent his head. And a beautiful green girl placed a chain over his head, and a voice inside him said, Stop! Before it's too late! But the chain was already around his neck and resting on his shoulders. The green girl gave a cruel laugh, and Eric's mind went suddenly clear like the water in a stream, and he suddenly knew 
that this was the Enchantress of the Fjord, and that no man ever returns from her embrace, and that now he knew all he needed to know. But the chain was round his neck, and he realised that although his mind was clear, he could not move a single muscle. You fool! cried the Green Enchantress, who now looked a million years old. How could anyone tell you what you wanted to know, when you yourself didn't even know what it was you wanted to ask? And she took a great iron stake, and was just about to drive it through the golden chain to fix it to the wall, when it came a shout and a blaze of light, and there stood Ragnar Forkbeard and Sven the Strong and Thorkhild, torn and stained with the bright green blood of the wolf bird, but safe and holding flaming torches in their hands. For a moment Eric was blinded by the light, and the Enchantress of the Fjord was too. But in that time Ragnar Forkbeard saw the chain round Eric's neck and knew what it was. So he snatched it off, and before the Green Enchantress could do anything, he had thrown it over her neck, and she froze as solid as still as Eric had been, and by the look in her eyes, they could see that she knew everything she needed to know. Eric and Ragnar Fortbeard and Sven the Strong and Thorkhild ran from that place as fast as they could. But as they reached the mouth of the cave, they saw to their horror the carcass of the wolf bird lying where it had fallen in a pool of green blood suddenly rear up and block their way. Before they had time to draw their swords again, it spoke and its thousand voices were like distant echoes calling from another world. Eric! They said, we are the spirits of others like you who did not know the question to which we sought the answer and so were ensnared by the green enchantress. But now you and your comrades have set us free. And with that, the creature seemed to collapse upon itself and split up into a thousand different shapes that fluttered up into the sky and were gone like moths to the sun. Then Sven the Strong sealed up the mouth of the cave with great boulders and rocks, and, it all and they all went back to their ship.